I must have the hetero core. Knew it was you. Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we will be entertaining yet another esteemed guest from the Shuheng Safira Zone, Untainted Heart Lingguang. I am Lingguang, the Quad's deputy over Nanjiao Isle. Lingguang is a universal support unit. She belongs to the Tianyuan faction of characters and uses traces as the resource to execute her skills. Although Lady Lingguang is classified as a support, her DPS potential should not be overlooked. Similar to Thor, casting any of Lingguang's skills will allow her follow-up basic attacks to begin at the fourth sequence. This can also be used as a reliable way to animation cancel her skills cast animation and grant insanely fast traces. Casting four skills within a 10 seconds window will change all skills into their third forms. You can choose to cast either Shining Armor, Burning Ember or Brilliant Flame. Once a skill is cast, the state ends. Only two buffs from this state can be active at any time. Her basic attack has five sequences and will grant one trace after the fifth sequence hits a target. When the fourth sequence makes contact with a target, skill one and two will turn into their variant forms. But if the fifth sequence is delivered, they will revert back to their standard forms. Her dodge skill has no intrinsic effects apart from triggering a three second time fracture. Skill 1, Undying Flames, has three variations. In start mode, leaps forward to deliver multiple spinning strikes to the target and generate one trace on hit. In ignite mode, dash forward dealing fire damage to the enemies in her path. This skill can be triggered after skill 3 is cast or after the fourth sequence of her basic attack hits a target and grants one trace on hit. A flame modes can only be activated while in possession of four traces. This skill will deal fire damage to the surrounding targets and grants shining armor to the entire team. Skill two, Rising Splendor, also have three variations. Start mode deals wide ranging AOE fire damage to the surrounding foes and grants a trace on hit. In ignite mode, leap back and deploys her fan forward to deal fire damage to targets within its area of effect, gain one trace on hit. Burning Ember deals AOE fire damage to the surrounding targets and grants the Burning Ember buff to all teammates. When her HP is lower than 70%, increase team's damage by 4%. This is increased by an additional 0.4% for every one HP below 70%. Up to 22% damage buff can be granted at talent level 35. Burning Ember can only be triggered while in possession of four traces. Skill 3. Hexagram Auspicious. If you guess this skill would also have three variants. Congratulations. In start mode, she uses her fans to deliver a flurry of strikes to the enemies in front of her. All skill will turn into their ignite forms on hit while gaining a trace. While in the Ignite mode, she performs an enhanced version of her original strike, shooting out fire in an X formation in front of her. In a Flame mode, expends all traces to deal AOE fire damage to the surrounding targets and grants the fire brilliant buff to all of her allies. While her HP is no lower than 50%, all allies under the effect of fire brilliance have their damage increased by 4%, and an additional 0.4% for every 1 HP above 50%. Up to a 17% damage buff can be gained at talent level 35. Her ultimate, Vermilion Starlight, grants all teammates the Burning Sun buff when any skill is cast in their aflame mode. Burning Sun grants a 50% chance to increase an instance of outgoing damage by 10% at talent level 35. In addition, all allies will gain the Blazing Sun buff. Blazing Sun grants a 100% chance to increase an instance of outgoing damage by 20% at talent level 35. While Ten Blaze Jinwu is in the party, fully restore her Divine Grace on cast, grants the Blazing Sun buff to all allies and increase Jinwu's fire damage by 15%. When Self or a teammate deals critical damage, she gains 3% of her ultimate charge. 
I know this was a lot of information. The TLDR here in Razor language is this. Skill 1 plus 4 traces equals shield. Skill 2 plus 4 traces while her HP is at 70% or below equals greater damage buff. Skill 3 plus 4 traces while her HP is at 50% or above equals lesser damage buff. The key here is going to be trace management, but she is extremely efficient at trace generation so this shouldn't be a problem. Let's be honest, most of you will likely have her be delegated to the AI. But for those of you who want to take on the challenge of running her as a manually controlled main DPS, I got you covered. By examining her kit, we can tell all of her skills are pretty equal in strength. This is good because it leaves a lot of room for error. That means for support Lingguang, you can follow the tutorial example combos and still do well. The only thing you really need to be mindful of is when to cast Burning Ember or Fire, brilliant due to their HP requirements. To turn her into a main DPS, we need to be running our yellow ether codes. We'll go over them later, but for now, all you need to know is that they change the functionality of our basic attacks, allowing us to perform various charge attacks. Skill 1, 2 and 3 will only be castable in their third forms, so our primary forms of attack will be our basic attack and charge attacks. These charge attacks will take the form of the start and ignite mode of the skills from her base kit and are considered as skill damage, so naturally they will grant us the traces we need to cast Shining Armor, Burning Ember and Fire Brilliant. Our game plan is pretty simple. At the start of the battle we'll start with a charge attack. Our first charge attack will always take the form of Skill 1's base form. We need to cancel its full casting animation by activating a second charge attack. If done correctly, this should connect directly into Skill 2's Ignite form. From there, activate two more charge attacks, and these will take the form of Skills, 3's base and Ignite forms. If done correctly, you should now have your four traces. Cast either Skill 3 for Brilliant Fires, Damage Buff, or Skill 1 for Shining Armor, depending on the situation. Rinse and repeat. There is room here to Unga Bunga, but this is going to be a nice route to gain fast traces and output a good amount of damage. Even though every character in the game have three possible configuration, thanks to their ether codes, it's rare to find one that can actually be viable while using all three. For our girl here, Red Ether Code is going to be for your general support role. It will provide the party with increased defences, a stronger shield, healing and ultimate charge, and when a party member casts their ultimate, the team's attack is increased by 50%. Blue Code is going to be your go-to if you specifically need her as a fire support. This will allow skills and teammates' fire attacks to decrease the enemy's fire resistance, teammates under the protection of her shield will have their fire damage increased, and after casting her ultimate, the team's fire damage will further increase. Lastly, Yellow Code is used for main DPS Ling. Like I mentioned before, this code completely upends her skills. Skills can no longer be triggered by using the normal skill prompts. Instead, you can cast them by using a charge attack. Which skill you cast will depend on which sequence of her basic attack the charge attack was used after. Her buffs will no longer buff the party, but will now only buff herself. When casting Shining Armor, Burning Ember or Fire Brilliant, she'll gain her attack buff proportion to her current max HP. Up to 3000 attack can be gained. When it comes to Functor, the free-to-play Gen Zone Functor for Tian Yuan is always a great choice. It will provide you with basic attack damage, skill damage and ultimate damage based on your modifying level. Of course, her signature Functor, Otherworld Huang, is going to be her best in slot. Notable perks from it are, when casting a skill in a flame mode, all team members will have their crit rate and elemental damage increase by 10%. The Burning Sun buff from her ultimate will have its proc chance increased by 8% and the Blazing Sun buff will have an increased duration amongst other things. The Functor's value is definitely there. The crit rate will help keep your damage consistent and the extra damage buff will increase her and her teammates damage output. The new Swallow of Eternity 
will increase her HP by 20%, grants a 5% crit boost while she is protected by a shield, increase the attack of teammates protected by her shield by 15%, and lastly, increases her basic attack damage by 20%. Needless to say, this one was tailor-made for her. Slot them into slots 1, 2, and 3. If you plan on using her as a support, you can use Nibelungenlide for slots 4, 5, and 6. Nibel will increase her ultimate charge regeneration and damage by 30%, making it easier for her to provide the damage buff from her ultimate to the team, and increasing skill chain damage while she's paired with Jin Wu. If you plan on using her as a DPS, Night Owl's raid is going to be best in slot for 4, 5 and 6, providing her with more melee damage and skill damage. For enchantments, attack, skill damage, bonus fire damage, crit rate, crit damage and loot back are the ones to keep an eye on. Warps gives you the freedom to personalise your build in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend here may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. In slots, one and two for support Ling. We want two Evolution Particle ones and two power-up melee. The Evolution Particles will increase the potency of the shield provided by Shining Armor. For slots three and four, we want two Evolution Particle twos and two Unfetters. The Evolution Particles will increase the potency of the buff, granted by Burning Ember, and the Unfetters will allow for faster ultimates doing combat. For slots 4 and 6, you guessed it, we want two Evolution Particle 3s and two Cognition Iterated. The Evolution Particles will increase the potency of the buff provided by Brilliant, and the Cognition Iterated will increase the potency of the buff provided by her ultimate. For DPS Ling, we want two power-up melees and two executioners. The two melees for bonus melee damage, and the executions for bonus damage against enemies that are below 40% of their max HP. For slots 3 and 4, we want two EM Flux and two Telepathize Force Field 1s. The Telepathize Force Fields will simply grant us a damage buff for running matching Aether Codes. While Savage is a viable choice for a melee character, she is able to heal and is shielded more often than not, so the flux is it is. Lastly, for slots 5 and 6, we want two Evolution Particle 3. The last two can be two Telekinesis Vectors, or two Kinetic Mods. The Telekinesis will further increase her neutral game damage output, but a higher damage buff can be granted from the Kinetic Mods. Albeit, it does have that modifier mode requirement. Just like Phantasmal Dawn Hera before her, Ling is a universal support unit, meaning you can slot her into any comp where a third is needed. That being said, she does have many premium teams she fits well into. A team with Ling, Jinwu and Hera can deal with anything the game can throw at you. Ling, Jinwu and Gengchen make single target encounters and dealing with large groups of enemies a complete joke. You can fit her into your Osiris and Thor comp your Oceanus and Enlil comp, your Anubis and Bastet comp. Heck, it might be time to whip out your Athena. In closing, Lingguang is a character unlike any other. Sure, other DPS and supports exist, but none of them can do both and do it well. A wise man once said, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Clearly, that clown has never met the quad deputy over Nanjioa Isle.